I want you to hit me as hard as you can. His energy level is unimaginable, his voice is unforgettable, and his sense of humor is unbelievable. Chris Tucker is one of those actors that when you think of him, you think of a vast filmography full of many great films, filled with action, comedy, and drama. And yet, that reputation has been built by only appearing in a dozen movies. He is a true example of quality over quantity. And he completely steals every scene he has ever been in. Every single one. In every single movie. His BFFs include people like Jackie Chan, Michael Jackson, and Bill Clinton, and definitely, absolutely not Jeffrey Epstein. Even though he did fly on his private jet, it was all over the news. The real and the fake and it looks really, 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 really bad. But he never flew to the island, just to Africa for a charity thing. And there is absolutely no evidence connecting Chris Tucker to any of Jeffrey Epstein's criminal activities. So, so, so that's, that's really good. Or that of Michael Jackson, if he did any criminal activity, de depending on what you, what you think. Okay, just, uh. I'm just saying that sometimes his name appears next to controversial figures. But it does not seem like he had anything to do with any of the icky stuff that any of those controversial figures are associated with. You don't know who you're messing with. I'm not that young. Which one of y'all kicked me? Get me out of here! <laughs> In fact, Chris Tucker seems like the real deal. An all-around nice guy that hasn't let the glitz and glamour of Holly Weird control him. So now that we got that scandalous elephant out of the room, let us talk cinema. And Chris Tucker has truly left his mark on the art form. Like I said, he is not in very many films, but most of the films that he is in have gone on to have some sort of major pop culture impact. Or at least a silly catchphrase. But lately it seems like we haven't seen much of this fast talking joke spitting funny man. Which led me to ask myself one simple question. What the fuck happened to Chris Tucker? I don't give a fuck! So now let us just sit back, relax, chillax, and enjoy this in-depth examination of the life and career of Mr. Chris Tucker. But you may need a little help relaxing on this Friday or whatever day it is you're watching this. And my good friends slash sponsors, Paloma Verde CBD, may just have exactly what you're looking for. Legally. That's right, moviegoers. Visit PalomaVerdeCBD.com for all your CBD needs. Get 25% off everything in their store when you use promo code Joe Blow. Once again, visit PalomaVerdeCBD.com. Enjoy the show. But to truly understand what the f happened to Chris Tucker, we must start at the beginning. And the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1971. Atlanta, Georgia. As one of six children, Chris Tucker quickly learned that comedy was a way to draw attention to himself. Tucker honed his stand-up skills at local Atlanta comedy clubs before moving to Los Angeles at the ripe age of 19. And by 1992, Tucker was practically a regular on the HBO stand-up series Death Comedy Jam. He was truly hilarious, and his energy was infectious, and his voice and his, his wit just hit you right in the funny bone. This young dude was so good that he inspired an already famous Jamie Foxx to get his stuff together and continue to work on his comedy craft. Jamie Foxx saw him and was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta step it up a bit. I said, cause I just came off, I'm Jamie Foxx, who could that be funnier than me? And I opened that door, it was a skinny little black dude with a tank top on that didn't fit, it was Chris Tucker. <laughs> Then Chris Tucker would appear as a rapper in an episode of Hangin' with Mr. Cooper. Season 1, Episode 4, Please Pass the Jock. 
The next year he would have an uncredited role in the superhero film, The Meteor Man. 1994 would finally see Chris Tucker have a credited role in a theatrical film, the sequel to House Party 2, House Party 3. Although the film had horrible reviews, with a current 0% on those tomatoes that are rotten.com, it pulled in a respectable $19 million and was actually only released on 848 screens. So House Party 3 was, was a hit? Also in 1994, he would appear in a music video for the late great Heavy D for the song Nothing But Love. What's up? What's up? What's up? And of course, one of Chris Tucker's most iconic roles came as Smokey in 1995's classic Friday, opposite Ice Cube. Cube and co-writer DJ Pooh said that they wanted to write a movie about life in the hood that wasn't just about the doom and gloom, but actually the pretty light-hearted stuff that happened in the hood. This character, Smokey, was based on writer DJ Pooh's actual time as a drug dealer who was originally going to play the role when the film was going to be self-financed and shot in black and white, you know, like Clerks in the hood. But when New Line Cinema agreed to make the film, they asked for a more seasoned performer to play the part of Smokey. Ice Cube and Pooh immediately thought of Chris Tucker because they were huge fans of his stand-up on Death Comedy Jam. Tucker actually tanked his first audition, but was granted a second chance. And that still wasn't that good. But he was ultimately cast based on his improv skills. Director F. Gary Gray did at least two scripted takes with Chris Tucker. Then he allowed Chris Tucker to let loose with his improvisations on the third take. And those third takes were always brilliant. Damn! As a tie-in to the release of Friday, Chris Tucker appeared in the F. Gary Gray directed music video Keep Their Heads Ringin' by Dr. Dre. The film Friday was a worldwide financial hit, with a gross of $28 million off a $3.5 million budget. But rumor has it that the cast was not paid very much. And that upset some people. Cause money. You got knocked the fuck out, man! Give me my goddamn money! Chris Tucker would also appear in one of the best music videos of all time. Tupac and Dr. Dre's Mad Max-inspired California Love. And the late, great Michael Clark Duncan actually saved Chris Tucker's life on the set of California Love. Chris Tucker said that he was too focused on overacting, that he wasn't focused on his own safety, and he flew right off the dune buggy. But luckily, Michael Clark Duncan was there, and he grabbed him in the air and pulled him back down. Michael Clark Duncan, a true hero. Also in 1995, Chris Tucker would have a supporting role in the Mario Van Peebles film Panther, about the origins of the Black Panthers, and a supporting role in the Hughes Brothers film Dead Presidents, playing a soldier in Vietnam. Then came 1997, which I like to call the Year of the Tuck, because Chris Tucker was working hard that year. The Fifth Element, Money Talks, and Jackie Brown all hit theaters within that 12-month period of time. Fuse like fire! So stop melting, ladies, cause the boy is hotter than hot. He's hot, hot, hot! First, there was the fifth element. Chris Tucker would make the big leap to the big budget blockbuster with this one, with a very memorable supporting character. Yeah, wow, he's, he's, he's in this one, whoa. His character definitely adds some spice to this already spicy movie. The late, great artist formerly known as Prince was originally cast to play this character, but Prince wasn't really reliable and didn't, you know, show up a lot of the time, so they decided to get someone who, who would show up. And Chris Tucker showed up. That's half the battle. Showing up. Funny enough, Prince and Michael Jackson were the influences for this performance of a motormouth outer space radio host. And at the time, this character seemed kind of weird. It was like, what? Why is he famous? Why would, why would, why would this guy have, a, have an audience? But now I look at this character and I basically see them predicting the modern day pop star slash social network influencer. I mean, Chris Tucker is basically like that little Nas X fella mixed with that Lady Gaga lady who's just live streaming. Like this is the modern day celebrity right here. We are living a Chris Tucker joke. Oh 
the fifth element was actually pretty divisive upon its release. Some people praised it, saying it was refreshing and loved the not-so-serious approach to the sci-fi epic, Space Opera, but others called it one of the worst sci-fi movies ever made. Of course, now, years later, most of those detractors have faded away, and the film has taken form as a true sci-fi classic. So all those haters were wrong. I absolutely love the zany approach to this sci-fi flick, the bright colors and the comedy, it was, a, it was a great contrast to the dark sci-fi stuff that we were kind of used to at that time. And Chris Tucker was the wacky cherry on top. Delish. Don't move. The film cost a reported $90 million to make, and in the United States it only pulled in nearly $64 million, but the real success came overseas, where it made an additional $200 million, remaining one of the highest grossing French films ever made, until that Untouchables movie beat it. Damn you, Untouchables. <laughs> the film received lots of well-deserved recognition, especially the set design and the costumes, and got an Oscar nomination for Best Sound Effects Editing, if you like sound effects editing, but Chris Tucker would be nominated for Worst New Star for Fifth Element and this next movie, Money Talks. And everybody knows the Razzies are just about politics, shouldn't be trusted. Worst New Star, Chris Tucker, what were you thinking? So yeah, money talks. Chris Tucker plays a fast-talking hustler on the wrong side of a local mobster, and Charlie Sheen co-stars. Chris Tucker is just one of those guys who's perfect for the buddy comedy. This was director Brett Ratner's first feature film. Chris Tucker recommended him after working with him on the Heavy D music video, Nothing But Love. And Tucker's hair in the film is not his own. No, it's actually a styrofoam hairpiece. That's really good styrofoam. The film received some harsh reviews though, cause those critics didn't get it. But there was a notable exception from Roger Ebert, the guy with the thumbs, who praised Chris Tucker's performance, saying it reminded him of Jim Carrey. Obnoxious at first, but then with just a smile, you see the intelligence underneath and it starts to grow on you. It takes a really smart and talented person to take what should be annoying and make it charming. And Chris Tucker does that and he absolutely shines in this movie. I don't care what any of those critics say, they're wrong. This money talks. And you know what? Yeah, who cares what the critics say because audiences found the film satisfying, giving it an A on the cinema score, if you care about cinema scores. And the movie made $48 million on a $25 million budget. So yeah, the money does talk. It talks as much as Chris Tucker. What? You heard me. What? Then, also, still that same year, 1997, came Jackie Brown. And Chris Tucker would have a small yet crucial, memorable role in Quentin Tarantino's underrated masterpiece, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown is actually the end of an era for Chris Tucker. This was the last film he made before he became a born-again Christian. So basically, this was his last film to feature strong R-rated material. He says that he would never do a film like this now. So his newfound faith is the reason why he became a little more PG-13 throughout the years. And you know what? It kind of helped, because his next film was Rush Hour, and that was like the biggest thing ever. Hey, you said 10 minutes. So after the success of Money Talks, Brett Ratner was quickly scooped up to helm Rush Hour. At the time, Martin Lawrence was attached to star with a $34 million budget that the original studio, Hollywood Pictures, balked at and put the film in turnaround. Enter New Line Cinema, who had made Money Talks with Ratner, and with that film's success had nothing but confidence in young Brett Ratner. 
But after all that time, Martin Lawrence had moved on, and Brett Ratner could only think of one actor who could match up to the fast-kicking Jackie Chan, the fast-talking Chris Tucker. And it was a match made in movie heaven. Critics and audiences agreed. The pairing of Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker was a perfect recipe for a kick-ass buddy cop movie. The film was a massive success, pulling in nearly $245 million worldwide on a $34 million budget. Jackie Chan actually says that he's not a very big fan of the first film, saying he doesn't like the way he spoke English in this one, and he could never understand what Chris Tucker was saying. So essentially, he did not understand the words that were coming out of his mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Then in the year 2000, we got a sequel to Friday, called Next Friday. And Chris Tucker was not in it. This upset everyone in the world. Well, at least people who were fans of Friday and, and, and the cast and the crew. Ice Cube said that breaking up that movie pair was like breaking up Shaq and Kobe. But there were many reasons why Chris Tucker did not want to continue on with the franchise that made him a star. And he actually has some pretty good reasons that I, I think we should respect. First of all, he just wanted to move on and says that it wasn't really a character that he, he could expand upon. And his new outlook on life and his Christian faith made him less interested in some of the Friday subject matter. Plus money and money. And as dope as it would have been to see Smokey alongside Ice Cube again, maybe we should just appreciate the little bit of Smokey that we got. Hold that Smokey into your lungs as long as possible and let that comedy chemical swim through your bloodstream. And I think that it's very possible that too much Smokey could have ruined the high. He also turned down the Chris Rock role in Lethal Weapon 4, and Jamie Foxx's character in Oliver Stone's Football Madhouse any given Sunday. Chris Tucker's next movie would not arrive until three years later, with the highly anticipated sequel Rush Hour 2. And even a massive film like Rush Hour 2 had to do some guerrilla style shoots. The scene where Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan run down the streets naked was filmed, even though the production was not granted permission to block off city streets for the shoot. Those movie making rebels. Critics found the sequel to be a simple repeat of the first one, with the action lacking intensity and the jokes lacking freshness. I don't know, I thought it was okay. I liked, I liked Rush Hour 2. Of course, the audience did not seem to mind any of that as Rush Hour 2 became Chris Tucker's highest grossing film ever, making over $347 million worldwide on a $90 million budget. Oh, I'm sorry, man. God, uh, oh, y'all look alike. Watch out! Then in 2002, there was Friday After Next, another Friday sequel that Chris Tucker is not in. He would also turn down $15 million to star in Black Knight because he didn't like the script. And for a time, Hollywood tried to make him the new Pink Panther, but that didn't work. So Steve Martin jumped in and saved the day. In between rush hours, Tucker would appear in his BFF's Michael Jackson short film music video for You Rock My World in 2001, which also featured Marlon Brando and Michael Madsen. Because, you know, a Michael Jackson, Chris Tucker, Michael Madsen, Marlon Brando collaboration was something we all didn't know we wanted until we got it. And then when we got it, we didn't really know what to do with it. He would then work with Michael Jackson again in the real-life legal drama of Michael Jackson's real life. Chris Tucker was one of the last witnesses to testify in the nasty, controversial criminal trial of, of Michael Jackson. Pretty sure you know the one. And Tucker actually knew the accusing family, so his insight was definitely important to the case. And like I said before, it doesn't seem like Chris Tucker has any connection to any of this alleged criminal activity. 
which may or may not have happened. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know what I do. You, I mean, do you, I don't know. Is, and you were very friendly with Michael Jackson. Yes, man. Michael, Michael was, he was the greatest entertainer ever and the biggest entertainer in the world, but he was the nicest guy in the world, man. He, would, he was just nice, man. I would go to Neverland and I would say I like something. He would give it to me. I said, Michael, I like that big screen TV. He was like, you like it, Chris? I said, yeah, I like it. He said, do you love it? I said, I love it. <laughs> Next day I go home, Michael would send the TV to my house. I said, Michael, thank you. Wow. But, I was like, Michael is nice and rich. <laughs> he would then appear in another music video. This time it was for Mariah Carey in Shake It Off, 2005. Then in April of 2005, Chris Tucker was arrested for reckless driving. He was going 109 miles per hour. And he got in more trouble for fleeing, not pulling over right away. Tucker claims that he was speeding because he was late for church. He pled guilty and paid the fine. Don't drive that fast, especially during rush hour. Speaking of rush hour, he did another one, rush hour three. So we can go now. This will just take a moment. Welcome to Paris. Oh shit. After a six year hiatus from the big screen, somewhat due to the fact that he was sick and tired of being offered similar roles, he refused to be typecast. Fans were clamoring for more Tucker, and they got it with this highly anticipated sequel. Threequel, I mean. Third, the third one. Rush Hour 3! Tucker was paid a whopping $25 million to return to the franchise, making him the highest paid actor at that time. The highest paid actor. Wow. Reception for the film was lukewarm at best with critics calling it another tired rehash, with no new ideas. And audiences didn't really like that Rush Hour 3 focused too much on the comedy, as opposed to the first two movies that blended comedy with action. So apparently there wasn't enough action in this one. The film would go on to gross a solid $258 million worldwide though, but the film's budget had ballooned to $140 million, so it wasn't exactly the big box office success that the studio wanted. Brett Ratner himself even acknowledged that it would probably be impossible to make another Rush Hour sequel considering the high cost of getting him, Chris Tucker, and Jackie Chan back together. But who knows? But do we really need a Rush Hour 4? I mean, like, I don't know, 3 is a good, solid number. Come on, Crouchy Tiger, don't hide that dragon! After another five years away from the screen, Chris Tucker made a triumphant return with a highly praised performance in the Academy Award winning film Silver Linings Playbook. The film's cast was nominated for Best Ensemble at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Sags. Chris Tucker was a big fan of David O. Russell, so he requested to read the script. And he really liked it and he wanted a role, so Russell gave him one. And for me, this film showed a different side of Chris Tucker. A softer, gentle side that still had, you know, that Tucker spark. But it made me really appreciate him, again, from a whole new light. It was like falling in love over again. He takes these roles that are just meant to be supporting players and he amps them up to 11 and makes them something truly special. And his performance in this film is one of the best examples of just how great an actor Chris Tucker is. The film was a massive critical and commercial success with everybody praising the chemistry between the entire cast. And that praise helped the film make $236 million worldwide off a $21 million budget. Okay, we got it, we got it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got it. He was then offered to star as Django in Django Unchained. Tarantino is a huge Friday fan and loved working with him in Jackie Brown, but Chris Tucker would pass on that project too. And of course, I'm sure it would have been great, but I just, I just cannot picture Chris Tucker as Django. But I'm not Quentin Tarantino. And he also almost reteamed with Brett Ratner again, for the original concept of the movie that became Tower Heist, before all of that Ben Stiller stuff, the original idea was basically a Black Ocean's Eleven with Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Tracy Morgan, Martin Lawrence, and Chris Tucker. 
And just reading the names of all those comedy legends is, is hilarious. Imagine seeing all of those names on one poster. Tower Heist could have been the expendables of black comedians. Dang, I, I really want to see that now. But as you know, that never happened. But don't worry, we got Matthew Broderick, Michael Pena, and the girl from Precious. So yeah. That's it. I don't want you talking to me for the rest of the robbery. Then in 2016, Chris Tucker would work with another highly skilled director, Ang Lee, taking on another supporting role in this ambitious war epic, Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. This film was one of those films that was released theatrically with the highly divisive HFR, high frame rate. Some people say this takes movie watching to a whole new level, and some say it looks like it was shot on a camcorder. I don't know, what do you think? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Comment your comment in the comments. The film, Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, would tank theatrically, only making 30 million worldwide off a 40 million dollar budget. People found the script did not live up to the promise of the premise, and that the technical achievements of the film were often distracting. He then had the honor to honor his good friend Jackie Chan giving his buddy a well-deserved honorary Oscar, and Chris Tucker is the perfect person to deliver Mr. Chan this unholy golden idol. That's right, technically Jackie Chan's an Oscar winner. In 2019, he worked with ESPN and told a funny true story about not being able to see over the heads and shoulders of LeBron James and Magic Johnson at church. Funny stuff. He continued his work in the sports entertainment industry that year in 2019 by hosting the NBA Awards with Shaquille O'Neal. Get up, baby! What's up? Are you ready to be entertained? And that's it. That's Chris Tucker's entire filmography. And I have to say, after doing this episode, I have a greater respect for him as a human being and a performer. When movie stars' careers start to slow down, you will generally see them turn to the dreaded direct-to-video market. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And many of those movie stars just crank out crap after crap after crap to get paycheck after paycheck after paycheck. But Chris Tucker says that he absolutely loves his career and has no regrets. He will make a movie when he feels the material is right for him, never wanting to burn himself out. And he has honestly just said that he's quote unquote really picky. Simple as that. He's a picky dude. And when Chris Tucker wasn't making movies, he was simply just living his life. He fills his time with his true passions, visiting Africa, which he says is his second home, and he still performs stand-up, even releasing a Netflix special in 2015. And Chris Tucker was actually planning a new stand-up tour before they decided to shut down the world. He did get in a little trouble with the IRS last decade, settling a few million in outstanding taxes, you know, blaming poor accounting and business management, that old familiar song, but he's working to pay it back. Damn! His devotion to his faith, becoming a born-again Christian in 1997, made him more selective on his projects. And I think we should respect that. Because it means when you get a performance like in Silver Linings Playbook, you appreciate it so much more. And you know what? I feel that audiences would take the magic and the charm of Chris Tucker for granted if he just pumped out mediocre film every year. You know, funny yet meaningless crap year after year after year after year. He could have totally done it. And I'm sure there would have been a few good movies in there, but you know, Others could have been not so good, and that could have ruined his legacy. You never know. But no, 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 Chris knows what he's doing, and it's working just fine. I, for one, cannot wait to see what Chris Tucker does next. And yes, I have to admit that part of me does hope that there is another Rush Hour movie, and part of me really wants to see Smokey return to the Friday cinematic universe, but we should focus on what we have. My cinematic glass is half full of Chris Tucker. And I am so happy with what Chris Tucker has delivered. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Chris Tucker. How was it? Oh, 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 wow. 
Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support.